so that you get a feel of that when, when you create a new project, how it looks and what it creates inside, and you will know that you know what is what. Uh, so uh, let, when you when you once you install the Eclipse uh, you know uh, plugin for Android, something new what you would get over here is this DDMS perspective. And you all aware of perspective, I believe. Uh, so I'll go and create a new project. So you get the new Java project over here. So I'll say jug demo user stuff. This is what uh, uh, you need to deal with. So if you have you're developing an application for the users community, and he has shown the fragmentation. As of now, I would say if I am the one who will, I will just choose 2.1 and 2.2. I wouldn't even care about 1.6 or lesser. So, uh, uh, but in case you are, then you you can download all the version through the with the SDK, and you will have everything set up for you. So you will see many more, uh, you know, many more uh, entries over here uh, down, and you can click that whichever you want to test your application with or develop your application with. Uh, so I will say jug demo app package name. This is again important. Package name has to be unique. So you want to make sure that you put something uh, with your company name or something or you know uh, dot uh, jug demo activity. This will make a free of cost. So uh, obviously you would have, if you're making an, an application with a UI, you will have activity. So I will say jug demo activity. This is a little tricky, mini, uh, mini SDK version. It's the same thing what we discussed just now. The only thing, make sure that you don't put 2.2 over here. You put the 8 over there. So whatever comes over here in the API, just put this. we are good to go. All right. So the demo, this is what we have. I will make this a small and I will close. All. Okay, so the jug demo, if you see that, you, this, this basic structure has been created for you by the Eclipse. And uh, fourth thing I would like to focus in this discussion uh, where, where you get started, what you need to care about in the beginning. Number one is Android manifest.xml file. Eclipse has pretty good interface to f for you to help, you know, to understand what is what. So I, I will not spend much time on that. i give you an overview how it looks like. So this is the XML view. So this is what is created for you. You will notice some of the stuff what we entered in the time we were creating the project. The package name, the min version, and this is used by the package manager, what I explained to you. So you want to make sure that this is correct. And I believe that, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and, uh, Andrew, if you have a device which has 2.2, .2, uh, and if you have an application which is 1.6, your application package manager wouldn't even bring it down. Or even when you search into the market, that application wouldn't even show up. Is that right? If your device is too soon, then yeah, well, show up. So, so I mean, from the user perspective, you can you can take that for granted that when you publish your app, which is in 1.6, or and two app, which is one is 1.6 and one is 2.2, the user, those who have 1.6 uh, device, would not even see the application in 2.2. So you're good from that perspective. So well, this is very important. Some of the fields are uh, are mandatory. You have to do this. You have to use it. Uh, moving on, this is the general stuff. The one thing I want you to notice is, and uh, uh, G2ME guys knows the mid lit how to how to make a mid lit uh, you know accessible for the first one. Here, you have different activity. I showed you three activity in the mail application. Similarly, here if you see that. Uh, the activity, uh, if you want to make a specific activity as the main activity, which you want to see at the first screen, you want to make sure that you put this intent filter. So the launcher, this will be the first activity which will be launched when an application is coming up. Okay, so this is the first file. Second file is created again, the Java activity for you. And you see that uh, the method you have to override is on create. Uh, where I'm doing two different things. I, I'll show you in a moment what does that mean. Uh, 
in the resources, there's something interesting which you want to know that main.xml. How many of you guys have done the Swing application development? Okay. And how many of you have done the Visual Studio.net? Okay. So those guys, those who have done the .net, they would be able to correlate that what we are trying to do here. Or those who have done the Swing application framework, though I've used that Swing application framework, which gives you a drag and drop and makes a XML under uh, behind the scene, they will be able to correlate. But essentially, what I'm showing here is that a designing a UI in XML way. So if you see that this has been created free of cost as a structure uh, for you by Eclipse plugin, and what you see in that is a linear layout in the text view. Okay? And now you see that and you have a Java class to the third important thing and there's a one more important thing which I would like to show you which is r.java. This r.java is an interface between your XML file and your Java file. So you can develop your UI either in Java file by doing new button and new list or in XML file by putting those tags and this r.java connect that XML with the Java file. So if you make a UI, design your UI in the XML and you want to access into the Java file, r.java .java make it easier. I'll show you how it does that. So uh, I'll go ahead and run this application to see that it's working. It's a really big phone. All oh, right. Uh -oh. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it seems like. What's that? Okay, Just bear with me. Okay, it's coming up. Okay, so we have that. The screen size is real big. Uh, I'll bear with that. Uh, so I run this application. <coughs> 